Hi, welcome to another LabCast. This will be the third in our dissection series, and today we'll be looking at uh, the crayfish. Crayfish are arthropods, and they come from the same phyla as insects, uh, spiders as well. And all arthropods share some general characteristics, including segmented bodies and an exoskeleton. They will be the most complex organism that we have dissected so far. And I'm going to point out to you some of the reasons that they are more complex. This lab will take a little bit longer than the earthworm or Ascaris dissection labs. And so I'm going to split this one up into two parts. We'll begin by looking at the external features of crayfish, and then we'll take a look at the internal features. Before we begin looking at our preserved specimen, I actually have a live crayfish in my classroom. It's in my fish tank. And so let's take a look at a living one, and then we'll look at a pre preserved specimen and observe its external anatomy. All right, let's get started. Here you can see the crayfish that I have in my fish tank. And they make very good pets because they are um, not picky at all. Uh, they eat just about anything and um, can live in just about any condition. Crayfish can be found in nearly any water source, freshwater water source in the United States. And there are uh, lots of different species of them. One interesting thing to note is um, the crayfish swim backward. And uh, you can see him jetting around um, very quick. So this guy is going to stay in my classroom. I'm not going to be dissecting him. Instead, we're going to be looking at a preserved specimen. We're going to begin our dissection of the crayfish by looking at its external anatomy. There's a lot to look at. Here you see I have a common uh, freshwater crayfish. It's about uh, six inches long. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is that it has a very tough exoskeleton. Uh, it's a protective covering that protects the internal organs, almost like a plate of armor. The exoskeleton is similar to a fingernail in consistency. Uh, it does flex. It's not completely solid. And another thing that you'll notice when you look at the crayfish in the exoskeleton is that it is divided into different segments. This is one of the things that is characteristic of all arthropods. The crayfish is divided into two general body regions. The cephalothorax, which is the entire front section, and the abdomen, which consists of all these uh, smaller sections at the back. You can also see a faint indentation line right in the middle of the crayfish that would separate the head from the thorax. But they are not separate there's just an imaginary line uh, that separates them. The most notable feature of the crayfish, of course, is the huge claws that they have. These are called chelipeds, and it has two of them that extend to the front of its body. And if you flip your crayfish over, you will notice that there are quite a few other appendages, specifically um, several pairs of legs and another pair of feeding arms. Let's take a look at those arms first off. These arms are used to uh, eat and to pull food into the crayfish mouth. And they are located in between the large chelipid claws. Below that, we have several pairs of legs. Um, mine has a couple missing. Um, these are the walking legs. And then below that, in the tail portion, are the swimmerettes, which are like little paddles or oars that help the crayfish move. You also notice towards the front, the crayfish um, mouth has two white jaws that help pre-digest the food somewhat. The crayfish is the most sophisticated organism that uh, we have dissected so far in terms of nervous system. You'll notice right away that the crayfish has eyes that project out from its head 
and it has two pair of antenna. The longer pair are called antenna, while the shorter pair are antennules. And these are responsible for most of the sensory gathering capabilities of the crayfish. The crayfish does have a brain, and we will be looking at that when we look at the internal anatomy. It is possible to determine the gender of your crayfish through the external anatomy, but it is very difficult. Um, at the third pair of walking legs is a opening through which egg and sperm um, are exchanged. However, it's very difficult to find, and I typically recommend that my students um, look at the internal reproductive structures to determine their gender, because it's very difficult to find that uh, external opening. I think that's it for the external anatomy. So in the next episode, we will take a look at the internal anatomy.